of the main things that you look into when it comes to starting content creation is going to be a camera. Yeah, we got audio and everything else like that, but what kind of camera are you gonna use? Are you gonna use your cell phone? Are you going to use a webcam? Or are you gonna use a DSLR? We've got many different choices out there, and I'd like to help you through that with various cameras that I've tried and give you a little bit of insight to see what will work for you. Let's show you exactly what we've got and give you that insight. Let's go. So we've got eight different cameras that we're gonna look into. First one, which everybody should have one, is gonna be your cell phone. Your cell phone camera, mine specifically, which is the Samsung Galaxy phone, has multiple different cameras. So this thing here has a camera specifically for video, a camera specifically for taking pictures. This thing here is gonna be one of your first starter cameras when it comes to any form of content creation, whether that be TikTok, YouTube, or streaming on Twitch. All you gotta do is connect this to your computer and you can also get an app to hook it up to OBS and it would be your very first webcam. This thing here costs you nothing outside of what you've already spent into it for getting the camera. Second camera. We've got a second set of cameras, which is your webcams. Starting with this one. This one here is a $10 webcam that I found on Amazon. This thing here has 1080p 30 FPS, is full HD. Doesn't really show much outside of it has a privacy cover, it has 110 degree wide angle, built-in microphone, if you don't have a microphone for some reason. USB plug and play, has a tripod clip, and it has 360 degrees flexible rotation. This one here though, the Avask, full 1080p 30 fps it's not a bad camera for ten dollars it'll get you going at the time of purchasing this camera i found it on amazon for ten dollars you may be able to find it for cheaper you may not be able to find it at all but this camera it's not bad the camera quality is pretty decent and it did the job i actually bought this as a backup camera for in the event that something happened to my main cameras for 10 bucks you got a decent camera the next camera which is a little bit more pricey but not so much is the nexago 1080p full hd webcam which is the nexago n60 this thing here was my background camera for quite a long time, which was to give an extra perception of my stream setup. This way you could see everything. It was more of a camera to show the world what I did. And this camera wasn't bad. It's a very simple camera. So it has 180 degree webcam clip. It's got plug and play free driver. So that means you don't have to download any extra drivers. It has a tripod ready design, 360 degree webcam rotation. Resolutions are 1920 by 1080 with 1920 by 1080, 30 FPS, 1280, 720 FPS, 30. And the image sensor is a CMOS digital image sensor. The downfall about this is it's a fixed focus meaning you can't really get it into focus very well if you are up close it is great but when you're about two feet away from your camera this thing doesn't have the greatest focus it is full swivel it does come with a threaded insert it also allows you to clip it to your monitor with a little bit of extra you know adjustments this webcam, when I purchased it on Amazon, was about $35 to $40. But as for quality, I wouldn't consider this one because, again, the fixed focus. Nexgo does, though, have a great customer service. I had an issue with my original one. This one's actually a replacement because having this constantly connected to your computer will burn up the camera. I got in touch with Nexgo and was able to get a replacement with no problems. And that was after owning this camera for over six months. So it was past the Amazon return time, but Nexgo fully got me a brand new one. 
So their customer service is good. The next camera that I've got on here is the Logitech C615 laptop webcam with 360 degree swivel and 1080p camera. This thing is actually pretty darn good. Very comparable to the C920. And it comes in right now currently at $30 on Amazon, normally priced at $70. This thing doesn't have fixed focus. It reaches up to 1080p. The quality itself is amazing. If you're gonna go for a webcam, this would be one of the ones to go to that is on the cheaper price range. And again, it does have a autofocus feature, so you can use that within OBS or you can use that on the Logitech software that came with it. 30 bucks, not bad. Our next webcam, which is another Nexigo webcam, but this thing here is my go-to webcam. Ever since I really found which webcam I liked, this one here takes the cake. It is the Nexigo N950P 4K webcam with remote with up to five times digital zoom. It does come with two different types of cables, type C to type A cable and a type C to type C cable. It also comes with a privacy cover. As you can see, when we open the box, the box is very, very well done. It's very well protected. The camera itself, again, comes with the privacy camera. It also comes with a microphone installed on it, but it does come with the tripod clip. You can fully adjust it. The nice thing that I really enjoy about this web camera is you can unplug it. So that means if it's connected to the back of your computer, you don't have to reach behind your computer. You can just get right in the back side. The remote also allows you to change settings on the fly. So if you're using this for business or a business meeting, you can use it to zoom in, zoom out and everything else and change where the positioning is. This one runs at $129, but again, Nexigo's customer service, very awesome. This, if this thing ever has any issues, which since using it in August, I've not had any issues. This camera is my front facing camera on my stream setup where I use my green screen and use it for all the different types of scenes I use. This one is very comparable to any GoPro or anything else. I would recommend this, but, and I put a strong butt on this, don't go and spend the $130 for this web camera if you can find something that is cheaper. Our next camera that we're gonna show off is gonna be not a webcam, but it can be used as a webcam. It is an action camera. So if you've seen any other various YouTube personalities, some have said to use a GoPro. Right here, we got the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Silver and the GoPro Hero 7 Black. Both of these cameras I found secondhand on Mercari. So if you want to find any of these at a relatively cheap price, go on Mercari and find it. I found this one here for $30. This one here is actually my main camera for this build desk during streams. And then I also got the GoPro Hero 7. I've got two of these. This one here is for my rear view cam for the stream that shows the entire stream setup. This one here, my first one I got for 300 bucks and the second one I paid around the same. Both of these great quality. The GoPro Hero 3 doesn't have a lot of ProTune setup. So the GoPro Hero 7 has ProTune, which gives you the option of changing the settings for the camera in the sense of video feed quality. The GoPro Hero 3 Plus Silver does not, but it does go up to 1080p 60. It has clean HDMI out and it also has interchangeable batteries. But for these, I would suggest using external power source such as a USB cable plugged into it. And it is so far, it has paid off its investment within a day. The GoPro Hero 7 and this thing here, this was my very first big boy camera. The GoPro Hero 7 is by far one of the best action cameras that you can find that has 
full 1080p HD output with it, with it being clean. And it comes with a lot of settings. So if you get the GoPro Hero 7 Black as full 1080p HD output, you can change all the settings. You can go to 4K, you can go to uh, 27K, you can go to 1080p, which 1080p 60 is what you're gonna use whenever you stream. You can change the field of view from linear, wide, and super view, which I always use wide on this. Plus, the main thing about this is the ProTune. So when you turn on ProTune, you get all these different settings from ISO changes to sharpness to EV comp, white balance, shutter. You've got many of different options on here. Plus, you can also record raw audio. So this is one of those cameras that if you're going to use this, you can use this for almost anything. You can use it for, you know, all your live action out on the town video stream. You could use it for content creation in general. You can also use this like what I do for Twitch. It'd be a great webcam. The only downfall about with these two cameras is you would need an external source to plug into your computer. You can't just plug it in through a graphics card. You can, but for this, you would need something else. So you would have to have a capture card. You can get one of these at Walmart for 20 bucks. You can find them on Amazon cheaper, or you can go and get the Elgato Cam Link, which the Cam Link 4K, totally recommend. The price, a little bit pricey, but I would suggest if you're gonna get any form of camera that you wanna upgrade to, say you wanna upgrade to a DSLR camera, get a GoPro and get one of these. And you can keep the GoPro as a side camera. The final camera we're gonna talk about is gonna be a DSLR camera or a digital single lens reflex camera. These cameras are what you see photographers use in various other forms of content creation. You might see a vlogger or somebody taking random pictures wherever. These cameras, they are very versatile. They're kind of chunky at times, but they are very versatile. The one I have is the Sony a6300 which again, just like the GoPros, you would have to have this plugged into a capture card. These cameras can be pricey. The thing is with these cameras, with the price, you're looking at not just the camera itself, but you're also looking at different lenses. The lens we're looking at right here is a wide angle lens. This camera, it has autofocus, but the lens that I have does not. If you wanna find an autofocus lens, you'll be paying a little bit more. This camera though is my main camera for everything from YouTube to Twitch. It is my main go-to camera for a lot of stuff. I've even used it on the go for taking snapshots and videos. This camera alone cost me $450, but I've seen them go as high as 700, 800 bucks. And it's kind of tempting to want to get something like that. But as we've seen, I've shown you various other cameras that will do the job to get you started. This camera would be more of your full on upgrade, ready to go into professional production. The only downfall with it outside of the price is also learning the internal settings, which I found out through my streaming time in the early times of having the camera that I didn't have the camera set proper. It wasn't set in video, it was actually set in photo and all the settings were all wonky. Since getting the settings right, it's been a breeze, it's been a blast. And especially with streaming, everybody loves the camera. Everybody loves the production quality of it. When it comes to how I would rate these cameras, let's use a five-star rating system. So let's do the Nexigo N60 first. This camera, even though the customer service is great, the product itself, I would give this a one and a half star. The quality of what comes out of it is not the greatest unless it's right in front of you. It does have a good camera quality with it being fixed and it's right in front of your face. But other than that, the camera quality sucks. And I won't deny that. It was a nice camera when I had it, but we'll put this as a one and a half star. Above that, 
we'll put the Logitech C615. We'll put this at a three star rating. The main reason is because the quality of the video feed coming out of the camera was great. And I would definitely have this as my backup camera if things went bad. This one here, three stars. Followed up by the Anvask Full HD camera. This one here, the $10 camera. Quality based, I would actually put this at comparison with the Logitech. Yeah, it's cheap. It's a $10 camera you can find on Amazon, but for what I paid for it, the $10, it's a pretty decent camera for the side. I would not suggest this one unless you needed a camera only because it's 30 FPS. But again, it's an option there if you need it. Followed by the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Silver. Now I'm gonna give this one a three and a half star. While this is a great camera, unlike the GoPro Hero 7 that we were looking at, you can't do ProTune. Plus, it doesn't have for functionality, you would have to buy an extra monitor on the back just to be able to see what you're doing unless you can physically go through here and remember how to get to everything. For on the fly changes, it's okay. But as for quality, solid three and a half to four stars. Versatility, I would have to say three stars. And that's just because the quality portion of it. Because Without being able to fine tune the video quality, it kind of only serves one purpose. Followed behind that, we will go with the Nexago N950P. This thing here, I love it. It's, it's a great webcam. I would recommend this for anybody who wants to spend a good amount of money on a high quality webcam. Even though it's Nexigo, you find them on Amazon all the time. This camera, very solid. It's not cheaply built. And the functionality and features on this thing, I would give this a four and a half, a four to a four and a half star. And this, again, it's a very expensive webcam, but for what it can do, it is great. Along with it, the GoPro Hero 7 Black. This one here, again, another four and a half to five star rating, if we can do that. And the main reason behind it is because it gives all the functionality you need in a camera, makes it versatile, so you can use it for all the things you wanna do with it. And it's just very well built. But I would put this at a four and a half to five star rating because of everything that it's capable of doing. Plus, when you want to upgrade from this one to a big camera, again, all you gotta do, buy a capture card, you're good to go. And then finally, I would put as a five star any DSLR camera or any digital camcorder that has the capability of pushing a lot of quality out of it. The DSLR cameras, as you can see, they have amazing quality. You're going to spend a lot more on a DSLR camera or a digital camcorder. But as long as it has the capability of pushing out clean HDMI out, which you can find that on Elgato's website, they have a camera check spot to where you can see exactly what cameras are going to give you the best quality in the event that you wanna upgrade to that. With these cameras, again, you're looking at a price range of anywhere between finding it used for cheap to spending a couple thousand dollars. This would be the ultimate upgrade camera if you wanted to. So, all the cameras, everything that we've reviewed right here, which one do you like? Which one do you see yourself getting? Which one would you consider for not just yourself, but maybe for somebody else that you know that wants to get into content creation or just needs a solid webcam for working from home? Let me know in the comments. Let me see what you suggest. And if I didn't review a camera, maybe that you have, a, let me know. I am always looking into all different types of tech, whether it be webcams, cameras themselves, USB interface stuff, 
I'm looking into it all the time. That's the purpose of this channel. So let's go back to the main desk, shall we? So there you have it. Eight different cameras that you can choose from that you may already have something or you may be able to afford. Whether that be the cheapest or the most expensive, which one did you like the most? Which one did you like the least? But until next time, until next time, we will see you on the next video. Take care. Thank you.